Hey gang, it is Monday, January 22nd, 2018, and I have a bit of a project I need to take care of. This is a 2013 Nissan Rogue, and it belongs to a good friend of mine, and it's her daughter's car. And unfortunately, my daughter decided to interact her car with this car. <laughs> and so... It's going to need fixed, and uh, since I do this kind of stuff, or I've done collision work before, I'm going to do this repair, and I'm experimenting a little bit today. I do have my new camera that I got for Christmas, and I also have an umbrella light that I'm trying to get more light on there, and I have a couple more of those that I'm going to experiment with. Um, but at this point, I'm going to work on this, uh, re repairing this fender. Now, most places, or a lot of shops would probably default to just buying a new fender um, but I feel pretty comfortable I can straighten this one out and get it in shape so uh, let me show you just a little bit of how the uh, damage is on the fender As you can see it's it's not super deep um, but it was enough I think that it cracked a little bit of the paint which isn't a big deal because paint's going to have to come off anyway Thankfully, it didn't catch the door, so that's that's a good thing. Uh, but I'm gonna have to rework this, and this metal's light, so it'll bend, you know, and manipulate pretty easily. But to do this process, I'm gonna end up um, jacking the car up, pulling this wheel off, and then work my way in towards getting to the backside of the uh, fender. All right, so as you can see, I have the wheel off, and the plan is to remove the inner liner, and it has these uh, torque screws here, and then these push pins throughout the interior of the uh, panel. So you can just get a screwdriver behind these and push out on them and pull that pin center, and then, like I said, the torques will take care of these. So I'll get those out of the way, and see how it can get how much access I have to the back side of that fender all right so I have the inner liner out of the way it's a pretty good sized panel and it had a variety of like I said screws and there's push pins that the center comes out of and uh, also removed this panel which covered up the back side of the transmission um, I'm not going to have as much room as I'd hoped. There's inner structure there that's going to be in my way, but I kind of suspected that. So what I will try to do is get as, as much of the fender pulled out or pushed out as I can prior to unbolting it from the car. Now, of course, the object is to try to get as much of this uh, as straight as I can while it's on the car. So I'm just going to use some wood, simple blocks of wood and I'm going to use that as leverage on the back side here and again I'm just trying to push out the, the deepest spots The tricky part here is there's a body line right here and so part of that bringing that out this little high spot really is going to have to go in but I'm just you know like I said working a little bit here and there body hammer and you can see this is rolled they're just piece of this flange is pushed out and so that's going to fight the shape so I'm going to work that in a little bit this hammer comes in handy as well this is more uh, for doing door skins that's why it has a short head on it but it also gives you a nice angle to come back against the Sometimes you can even use a block.
low spot right here that I'm, I have trouble reaching with the hammer. So. This is another handy little bar to have. That'll actually get back in that corner a bit better. All I'm doing is just wiping it with a little lacquer thinner to get any of the uh, residue off so I can see what I've got. And there you can see I still have a little bit of work to do. It's got a high spot right here, a little bit low there. And this is where I have to build this or bring this out a little bit one way or another. Otherwise, the shape isn't too bad and uh, you can see it's a little bit low right here and I'll just keep working that until I get get it uh, where it's close enough that I can start using filler So at this point, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. Uh, it's going to still take filler, which is not unexpected, but it's not going to take uh, a lot in my opinion. The difficulty will be getting this corner or this uh, body line back and the secondary line right here. Now, normally what I do is I work the body in each one of these planes. So like this will be one plane this will be one plane and this will be the uh, third plane and as I do that I won't try to work the edge until last I want to get this surface in its correct angle I want to get this in the correct angle and then here and then I will dress this in in the last phase I hope that makes sense so at this point the plan is I'm going to mask off the door put a couple layers of tape on there and then I'm going to take my uh, sanding disc and break through this paint and anywhere that it's completely cracked I will go through all that um, otherwise I just want to really scuff this up and make it so that the paint or the uh, filler will stick to it there's a little bit of deflection right here and I got that most of that out 
but it's going to take a little bit of filler to shape that as well. So. So I want to just mention a couple things. What I normally do at this point after it's all um, sanded out the way I, what I'm comfortable with, and I didn't take it all to bare metal, and I'm not going to put epoxy or anything on this. Um, filler, good filler, is designed to go straight to bare metal. So there will be no issue with this. There's no rust, no previous uh, problems under the paint. Um, but what I do is I, I use Windex. I spray everything down, I wipe it down with Windex, which I've already done, and then I take an air nozzle and blow it and make sure everything is dry. At this point, I will mix up some filler and spread it across here and start uh, working it into the fender. Alright, so I've mixed up using one of my clean sheets board, some Rage. I think I'm using Rage Gold. I can show you that in just a minute. Now I'm going to put more on than I need, obviously, but I'm not just going to pile it on. So I want to uh, first coat. I want to work with and kind of get the basic shape. And so I will extend it out even past where I plan to go, slightly. And again, that tape is going to help getting any on the door, or keeping it from getting on the door, I should say. I'm not pressing super hard because I don't want to push it all away from the uh, high spot. So I'm going to keep the high spot slightly covered as well so I can shape back to them. And you can see how I'm kind of creating that line that runs right here on the fender. Just, just slightly. And I think I'll stop at that point. I don't want to oh, get a little bit more right here. Because once it starts to cure, you end up causing more problems by continuing to try to drag it. Uh, this is what I'm using. 
Rage Ultra. You might be able to hear that it's starting to rain now. And uh, humidity doesn't help when you're trying to get uh, filler to dry. So I think it's dry enough. I'm going to start block sanding and just show you how I do it. Okay, so I'm using 3M 100 grit on a Dura block. I just wrap it around. And now I want to work, like I said, one plane at a time. So I'm going to do some of this and then some of this and then work my way up. I'm not trying to do finish work right now, I'm just trying to knock it down. And I'm not pushing real hard. There you can see the shadow of the uh, metal coming out behind the filler. I'm also trying to use this forward section as a reference point. So as the filler wears down and I see the scratches develop here, I know that I'm starting to get in the right angle. And there you can see the line of what would be the body line. Now you see it's darker here and here, but it's light here. That's where it was low. I don't want to I don't want to hit that anymore. I want to leave that right where it's at and move on to the next section, which is this upper uh, flat area. There you can see it's getting light right there. I should say dark, where the color of the metal is coming through. Same way there, high spot. Let me pause there for a second so I can show you something. Now as I was saying, this is your high point where it's burst, it's breaking through the filler. But you, hopefully you can see there's a little, there's low spots where I didn't get enough filler. That's a low spot and that's low down here. You can just see some different coloration to the filler. So. I don't really want to do much more to that. I've got that plane pretty close, but I need to add some in these lower areas. So I'll move up and get to this area. The uh, This lower section is pretty close, but I can see there's a low spot right there. And I say that because I can see the difference in the coloration. And I've got a high spot right here, so I, I don't want to sand anymore. I want to stop and add more filler. People tend to want to keep on sanding and sanding and sanding, and they they take away all the material they just put on, which is counterproductive. You got to know when to stop. Now I'm going to work the upper portion. I'm going to get a different block and show you something else. Because of the shape that I'm dealing with up here, it's not so flat as these two sections. I'm going to use a round door block and just roll the paper up on it. And I'm kind of rotating my wrist as I go to give me more contact area. you can see I'm doing crisscross patterns as I go. This is the tricky transition right here 
because you've got a, a, a subtle body line, so you don't want to just sand that off. You have to stay above that or below it. Maybe you can see there's a defined line right now that's following the line of the uh, rise on the fender. I'm going to leave that there for now. Some of the tighter spaces I'm going to use a short dura block. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing so far. Um, like I said, you can see that line being created, but I can also tell you that it drops off right there. It's low. There's some graininess to the filler, and you can if you're you can visually see that line kind of dip down right there. So the only other thing I want to do is do some more of this transition work up here. And to do that, I have a little block that accepts uh, DA paper. So I'll put that on and work these sections and work that down. So once I get that finished and prepped, uh, I'll do a little bit more fine work around the edges and then I'll put a second layer of filler on top of that. So like I was saying, I've already done most of the transition work up here. And it's the same technique, crisscrossing. All right. Now what I'll do is I'll blow that out real good. Make sure all any of the uh, low points are empty of any kind of dust residue. I'll mix up another batch and apply it. Okay, so this is the second round of filler, and like I said before, I'm going to continue to work the plane. Work this plane, this plane, 
and then transition all this in place. Again, I'm still running my 100 grit on my Durablock. Trying to get this transition right here so it, it's smooth. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. I don't see any low spots. I have my little bit of high metal showing on the edge, which is fine. So now I'm going to work this upper section. And there you can see the shadow of the high areas coming back through, and that's good. I don't want to go into that, I want to leave those. I'm going to work this edge a little more and I want to come, I can see, it's hard to see on the camera I'm sure, this, ver this body line is very faint, so I'm going to try to make, that, make it appear by continuing to work each plane. So right now this, this line, is the, the high spot or the crease is way up here and that's too tall, I can see it needs to come down, so I'll continue to work this towards this plane. I want to show you a little more what I'm talking about. There you can see the shadow of that line because like I said this is very subtle. Very very subtle. And you have to be careful you don't work that off. So the idea is I can see how wide this is over here and I want to make that pattern continue and if you compare the height let's say from here to that body line I can see this is taller. So to make this line move I have to sand it from here and come down and work the material away or take material away and that'll move that line down closer to this plane. But I think you get that you can see what I'm talking about with the shape. Same way with this radius up here. Same concept. You want to work it and, and try to have that transition follow and stay the same width. It's kind of tricky, but this is how it works. And then you can see more of what would be the high areas. So again, I'm trying not to break through any of that.
Okay, so you can see the lines are starting to appear even better. And at this point, it's kind of hard to say, well, where does it end? How, how does this you know, transition out? Does it fade away or does it continue? So the best thing to do is compare it to the other side. And there you can see this follows all the way down into the door. So I'm going to have to make sure that follows that transition. And then there's a subtle hump right here that rides the entire length of the car. And then it fades away as it comes into this uh, transition here. So that gives you an idea of what it's supposed to look like. And that's what I'll end up doing as I continue on on this side. Okay, what I did is I pulled the tape up and that body line, I brought it up and I marked a spot here on the fender and then I traced it back across the tape and that way I have an idea of where this line is supposed to end. Okay, I hope you're getting the idea from this. I'm going to turn the tape off. I'm still going to add a little more filler here and there, but I will do more sanding here in a minute. So like I said, I'm going to add some more filler. Um, what I'm seeing is these high spots, um, the end result is this is a low spot. I can feel it with my hand. It dips in just a little bit right there. So I'm going to coat it with one more thin coat of Rage and then sand that down. said before I'm going to continue to work each plane so I want to work this area this area and then come down into it like this so just more sanding Point something out. And I know it's hard to see all this, um, but the lines are showing up nicely. You can just see the shadow there, I hope. But uh, this transition up here at the top, if you see a line, you can I can feel that with my finger. That'll show up obviously when you start putting primer on. I'm looking for something along this 
uh, appearance to where it's a, a faded transition and it kind of just disappears uh, from color into filler. So that's kind of what you're looking for as an end result. Now, I'm still using 100 grit, but I will be going to 180 here in just a little bit uh, to help smooth out more of these transitions. And then later on, I will uh, come around the edge of all this probably with um, uh, probably 400 on a DA and even feather this more so. So there you can see the line. It's showing up nicely and I will just continue to use the round block at this point um, and maybe even the short block to work some of this area up here. And now I'm going to switch to another block. This is actually uh, more used for wet sanding. It's got a little bit more flexibility to it, but it'll be rigid enough to give me a form for the sandpaper. Um, but it'll let me get into that transition right here. It's just a weird kind of transition. Now I'm going to switch to the 180 paper. And I'm not being aggressive, I'm just smoothing out some of the scratches. And again, like I said, I don't want to break through that. Even though I see color, I don't want to go very much deeper, if at all. I know it may not look like it, but it's actually really close. And what I'll do now is break this edge back to smooth out that transition because this is, you know, round and right now it's got a corner on it. And then I'll smooth that out and it'll fade back into the door. Um, at this point, once I do that, I'm going to do a little cleaning up here on this edge where the tape is and I'll probably retape everything because the plan is to get some primer on it and get a good look at it. Now 
And like I said, I'm going to take the 400 to come around these edges here and soften it up a little more. <laughs> taped up, mixing up some primer, and spraying it on there. Just wanted to show you how I tape this up. Um, kind of a trick I use is to lay the paper so that the length of the paper is this way and the tape is on top and then you fold it back on itself. And what that kind of does, it gives you a bit of a soft edge instead of having a hard tape line you've got more of a soft edge to work to. Um, aside from that, I wanted to show you this. I, I've shown this before as well. When you're pouring out your paint or primer, make a V out of some tape, and that way you don't pour it into the trough, and it's easier to get it into the cup, and it'll just run straight in. And then we you can pull the tape off and throw that away. So I'm gonna mix up some PPG um, primer and get it sprayed on there. It's a little bit cold out here. I'm trying to warm it up a little bit with my heater, but um, it's, it's going to spray a little, uh, a little chunky, let's say, because it's just kind of cold. I want to show you what it looks like while it's wet. And there you can see the transitions. Even that subtle high spot that follows the door line on out. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to let this cure a little bit and put another coat on. And then uh, we'll take another look at it. And so now you can see what it looks like without the paper uh, surrounding the repair. Um, that's where I'm going to stop and that'll be the end of this video. Uh, the weather is just not warm enough to take care of any kind of paint or clear coat, but I just want to show you the, the uh, transitions. You can see where that body line comes up off the door and blends into the fender. I think I captured that pretty well. <clears throat> also the high point in the door. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. And then secondly, the, uh, or thirdly, I should say, the body line that flows along the edge of the fender. So, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I may contact a friend of mine about doing the finish work on it and letting him spray the color. And um, that's going to be it. So, hopefully you found this useful and give you some ideas 
uh, of uh, the techniques that are, I use and other people use to make these body lines come back to life. So that's it for now. Uh, stay tuned. There'll be more videos coming. And as always, thanks for watching.